Hi friends, so Derek here. I was talking to Spanish people and I'm at East LA College. Another debate term, another video. I've been doing this now for about almost almost three years, I guess. Um, on my own. Making videos, I mean. Making videos and going to tournaments with autonomy, not with kudos. You know, I just judged a double flighted round where I picked up kudos on both ballots because they won the rounds. And that's what I'm talking about, how stuff's subjectively determinable. I don't have to worry about being biased. It's all in front of me in black and white. They said this, they said this, they said that. They didn't respond to it. They extended an impact to me. It's very simple stuff, you know. But today's going a little iffy. Grace lost at least one round in which... A terrible, terrible judge basically said, your case is too hard for middle school, and I'm not going to vote for it, even though your opponent made none of the arguments your opponent would have needed to make to win the round. That kind of judge intervention drives me insane. So, I'm not going to win LD today. We might, in theory, get second place. Or, I mean, I guess in theory we still could win it. I think it's very unlikely, because... Usually, the winner's undefeated. Although, an interesting phenomenon occurred today. Nova just didn't show up at all. Nova's one of the biggest teams in the league, along with Kudos. And they just, all their teams dropped. And I, I don't know what happened. I'm curious. Anyhow, having Nick here is a nice thing. Nick is judging for me and has been able to sit in on a couple of rounds with me judging and... Uh, Got me in a little bit of trouble by passing out my business cards. Not really trouble. But Robert just said, hey, I got a couple complaints about that. And I was like, I didn't pass them out. But anyway, uh, it's the sort of thing you can get away with with a new person one time. So, but the reason I really like having Nick here is because what he told me is something that I totally believe and didn't realize I, I'm very happy to get from him, which is... He said that he understands a lot better why I'm the way I am about argumentation and stuff, seeing me judge a debate round and give RFDs. It's this this community that I'm in, this debate community, the students base their decision on whether a judge is good or not, not on whether the judge votes for them, but whether the judge is correct. So at the end of that last round, I voted picked up kudos against Wilshire. Robert's my friend. Kudos to the evil empire. Doesn't matter. If I had picked up Wilshire, both teams would have thought I was a bad judge. Why? Wilshire lost the round fair and square. Eunice in the uh, in the final focus, she she did this kind of garbage. All our all our conditions are still standing. They didn't address any of our rebuttals, so those are all standing. That is meaningless. You've got to go down them and say. This one is still standing because we made this argument. They responded with this, but it didn't address the warrants. So the warrants are still standing, so the impacts are still standing. Now I'm going to extend those impacts and tell you why they matter on the flow, and why you should consider this a voter, the thing you're going to vote on. She didn't do any of that stuff. And um, bottom line is, they, they did win framework. Unless you won framework, they won the criterion that we should consider students' best interest and not morality or cost-benefit analysis. But it didn't do them any, any good. Why? Because they didn't link back to framework. They didn't say, and because we won framework, these impacts here are the ones that count, and those impacts of theirs don't count because we won framework, they dropped it, we extended it, and therefore we can eliminate all these impacts. Because they didn't make those arguments, it didn't do them any good to win framework. And I explained all this after the round, and, you know, the teams walk away feeling good about it. Win or lose, they know that I made the right decision. Nobody ever says... Um, but that's bullshit because whatever, and they, they're welcome to if they want to, but the reason they don't is because I've accurately described everything that happens on the foil. So in the last round, for example, the team that won, they read a card talking about how college athletics could afford this paying students because there aren't that many scholarship players and this is the revenue and if you break it out, it's okay, you could do it. And then they spent the rest of the round talking about how you need to have uh, students get student athletes getting paid because only two percent of them are on scholarships, 
and the rest of them need money. But of course, the NAIC didn't call it out. The NAIC didn't say, hold on a second, your card says it's affordable because you're only paying scholarship athletes, and now you're claiming all these impacts of paying non-scholarship athletes. So which is it? NAIC didn't say that. So what am I going to do with it? I accepted both impacts. It's the only thing you can do. If you're one of the people out there who thinks that there's no, there's no moral imperative in argumentation because every argument can be just negated ultimately. Number one, that's not true. And number two, the, the reason it's not true is because an argument is a discursive event with a set of exchanges back and forth in which each party establishes things for the purposes of the flow. Establishes its impact. It's established until it gets responded to. The thing about establishing things is they have weight. If I establish X because of Y over here, and then I establish Z because of not Y over here, I've double bound myself, right? Or maybe I haven't double bound myself, but I've contradicted myself. They did double bind themselves in that round when they said, uh, Oh, yeah, in the previous round, somebody said, it's called, uh, paying them won't cost anything more um, because they'll, they'll lose their scholarships. And we need to pay them so they can help their families. And, um, and that it won't cost any more because paying them is the same amount as the scholarships. Well, if they're getting paid the same amount of scholarships, they have to spend all their scholarships to go to school, in which case they get no additional money and they can't help their families. If they help their families and they can't afford school, in which case they can't play and they no longer get a paycheck. That's called double binding yourself. So, um, but again, in that round, the opponents didn't call it out. I don't remember who won that round, but because they didn't call it out, I don't count it on the flow. If they don't make the argument, I don't count it. I don't intervene like that. Whatever I'm voting on is said in the round. And that's why I'm so enthusiastic about seeing people be fair to each other in argumentation. Like when Eunice said that they all they didn't respond to any of her rebuttals. I said, you wouldn't get any you wouldn't get any impacts on the flow from that statement from me because you need to explain it more and tell me what it means and why it should matter. But regardless, you definitely won't get any impact from it because it's not true. I see here at least several of your rebuttals receiving some sort of response from them. You say they didn't answer them at all. You're just misrepresenting what happened. And so I just discount that entirely as, as and the thing is, it's not me intervening with my opinion because I'm not talking about, I don't think that argument is strong. I'm saying you are misrepresenting the action, the record of actions in the round. That is something that we should all be able to see by looking at our own flows. And so the bottom line is if you flow a, a debate round properly, and it's argued well, there's always a clear-cut winner or loser. When it's mushy and it's hard to pick a winner or loser, it's because the team teams argued past each other weren't responsive. And non-responsiveness is the problem even in debate. Remember, these are middle schoolers, but they still argue a lot better than most adults. A lot better. And at least they understand what they're doing. So, you know, because it's middle school, there are some, some problems, obviously, like, they don't necessarily get everything and they say some silly things. One time I watched a round where this girl acted like she really caught the opponents in a, in a whammy. And she's like, my opponents are trying to claim that, that terrorists in the Middle East will use cell phone technology to communicate with each other. But it obviously judged that you do not have cell phones in the Middle East. I was one of my students said that. Like, yeah, it's, like, it's not something I covered in that specific little warrant in class. You'd think it's common knowledge. Obviously, they have cell phones in the Middle East, but, you know, middle schoolers think some crazy-ass shit. <laughs> right earlier, the kids were arguing, it, it cannot possibly be fair to pay some students if it raises the cost for others. Well... Is it, pay, is it fair to pay employees at 7-Eleven if it raises the cost of super, super big gulps? You know, the thing is, the framework question here is pretty simple. It, are the 
students buying the university's product or is the university selling the student's product? Only with scholarship players is the university selling it, the student's work product. And by all reasonable legal or normal definitions of employee, therefore they're employees because the law says to suffer or permit to work. And work can be easily enough defined as um, that which contributes to the profitability of a commercial enterprise. And the courts have already ruled that universities have commercial enterprise rights regarding their own television deals. So the NCAA can't restrict their television deals. And, and therefore, there's, it's just, it's obvious if you're going to make all those other court decisions, you can't then just say, yeah, but let's just make an exception for NCAA student athletes. But of course, if you're not arguing it framework right, then you're not going to get anywhere with it. If you, if you're not pointing out the fact that why are we why on what criterion should we decide this thing should we decide it on legal consistency should we decide it on justice should we decide it on uh, what's best interest of the students should we decide it on some sort of social justice shit like well mostly minority students get scholarships and they're poor and therefore they need to be paid because anytime minority people are poor they need free money of course it wouldn't be free money they would earn it but the point is that's not why you should pay them we don't decide to pay people based on whether or not they need to be paid. We decide to pay people based on whether or not they're being useful. Uh, I could hire somebody to do something, um, and I would hire them based on their ability to do it, not on their need for a job. I could find some homeless guy who really needs a job, who's mentally ill and super strong out on drugs, but that probably wouldn't be the best employee nor do a very good job so obviously we don't consider the neediness of the person to be a qualification for salary and it's weird the way that people don't generalize out and back in again very quickly or very well but you know these are kids and they're learning and my kids do a much better job of it I really got my fingers crossed that Evan and Alan can win this goddamn thing since Grace isn't going to win LD Anyway, thanks for watching, and please help me if you can, if you're willing to, help me get more subscribers and or views. I want to get to a million views. I'd like to get a lot of subscribers. I mean, obviously these things are true. Obviously I'd like to be successful. But, um, you know, I, I'm beginning to think I could if, if just like some one video like takes off or something. You know, I don't know. Something's going to happen someday eventually, probably, hopefully. If you help me, it'll happen more likely and sooner, maybe. And you'll have my eternal, undying gratitude. And remember, friends, remember, friend, you. You, you know who I'm talking to, it's you. I know we haven't really talked a lot before, but it, it is still you. You are my all-time favorite viewer. It's true.